thank you. The time right now is 8.32. The manhunt is on for a gunman who opened fire at a party in the Bronx, striking a teenager. And a fire at the Kingsbridge Armory over the weekend highlights the need for upgrades and investments. Right, we keep talking about that one. Joining us this morning is Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson to discuss these issues and more. So good morning to you, Good morning. President. Good to see you. Happy Thank Monday. You. Happy Monday. As you know, Passover begins this evening. So let's mm -hmm. begin there because there's a lot of tension right now with yes. what, what we're seeing play out. Um, in the war in Gaza, the Bronx home to a very large Jewish community. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a rise in anti-Semitic incidents across mm -hmm. the city as well. So what's being done to protect the Jewish so, population? So working with NYPD with Patrol Bar Bronx, our Assistant Chief Ben Gurley and our Deputy Chief Keon Ramsey, uh, where we've had several meetings already pre-Passover with many of our rabbis mm -hmm. uh, and you know Jewish leaders in the Riverdale, Pelham Parkway, City Island, Van Cortland Village community, which is where many of our Jewish residents live. We've worked with organizations like the Riverdale Y, Mm -hmm. I've attended Seder events. I have one this evening at Pelham Parkway. So we will make sure that there is a significant police presence outside of our synagogues as Passover begins this evening. But I think the broader conversation is we have to continue to have ongoing conversations around anti-Semitism and what we've seen, the rise in hate against Jewish communities, uh, Jewish students not feeling safe on college campuses and in their communities is really unnerving. It's really alarming. And I think mu more must be done and will continue even beyond Passover to work with our Jewish rounds table, the men and women of the NYPD's leadership, as well as our Jewish leaders and clergy leaders. Uh, during Friday's State of the Borough Address, mm -hmm. you talked about investing in yes. safety um, and possibly bringing more security cameras mm -hmm. to the borough. Where are you with that right now? So we are in the midst of the uh, budget process right now. The executive budget will come out later on this month uh, through the Adams administration, and we get a portion of that as borough president. We've been adamant about public safety as a priority and security cameras as one of the tools in our mm -hmm. toolboxes and residents want to have cameras in their communities when they travel they want to make sure that there's a way to capture an incident something that happens and we're working closely with the NYPD and we will make an allocation in this budget for FY25 that money will go to the NYPD directly and patrol borough Bronx will work with all 12 of our commands and we will figure out the best locations obviously we're paying attention to locations where we've had high crime, yeah. traffic violence, where mm -hmm. pedestrians and cyclists do not feel safe. We want to make sure we address reckless driving, uh, the car racing that happens all the time, the e-bikes and e-scooters that are unlicensed. A lot of people complain about that very consistently. Yeah, we just had the NYPD on last week talking about the e-bike absolutely in particular and how mm -hmm. they're going after yeah. it mm -hmm. in the Bronx in particular yes. as mm -hmm. well the South Bronx so I want to talk about this because we're talking about public safety and this is really part of it and it comes to opioid usage mm -hmm. and deaths the highest really in the city is right. in the Bronx so there's a new center in the neighborhood that's opening up of course it always comes with mixed reactions when you open something like of course, this yeah. what are you hearing about it and how do you think it'll change some of the numbers I think it will address the opioid crisis. We have some of the highest rates of opioid-related deaths. Uh, we have to deal with fentanyl exposure yeah. as well. We lost a one-year-old last year. We also have to deal with harm reduction and drug treatment programs. They are successful. They work. Overdose prevention centers, which are very controversial, mm -hmm. but really have proven successful in preventing overdose deaths. We're working closely with health and hospitals and organizations like St. Anne's Corner Harm Reduction, and we are going to be fully funding uh, an opioid center in the South Bronx the heart of where we've seen so many opioid related uh, what's going to be in that center is it is it a safe injection site what is it no so it will be a series of wraparound services it will be uh, just counseling it will be harm reduction it will be drug treatment programs it will be day treatment programs not an OPC designation um, that's not yet happening in the Bronx but it will be a center where it's centralized and you can bring all of the clients together in one location so they don't have to travel from one location to another okay uh, can you give us an update on the Kingsbridge Armory? A any idea yet what caused the fire there? And also, I mean, you've earmarked $2 million for that armory. Yes, I want to make it clear that reimagining the Kingsbridge Armory is a priority for our administration, working collaboratively with Together for Kingsbridge and Councilmember Pierina Sanchez and EDC, we want to make sure that we reimagine re this space as a site of promise and potential mm -hmm. of jobs, small business incubator space, tech industry, so many jobs that we know are critical for Kingsbridge and the Bronx. And we learned FDNY got a call a few days ago about smoke at the Kingsbridge Armory. Now, we don't believe it was necessarily a fire. There's okay. an ongoing investigation with FDNY and Con Edison. We believe it was electrical in nature, I so see. the power has been cut off as a result of this, and we're going to look at what happened with the investigation. So Con Ed, EDC are working closely, but no injuries, no damage to the Foul armory. Play. 
Excuse me? Was it foul play? We don't believe so. Okay. And, and that's what the investigation will yeah. ultimately find out and determine. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about the first legal dispensary opening in the Bronx this past weekend on Saturday, which just happened to be 420. 420, and yes. So a lot of folks know what I that means. The high holiday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so were you there for the opening? I was there. And it's actually not the first. It's number four. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Yes. It's we've the... opened on Williams Bridge Road. We had two Jamaican brothers open a few weeks ago in the Northeast Bronx. Okay. We also have East Tremont. And this is number four, Conbud. In Mott Haven, it's the former site of the Mott Haven Bar and Grill. It's owned by formerly incarcerated men of color, uh, Alfredo Jr., Michael, and Koss. And they opened their first dispensary in the Lower East Side last mm. year. So this is oh. their first in the Bronx, I see. in the South Bronx. But the organization, Hoods Fatality and uh, Bistros and Bronx Draft House and Social Bodega, they have been giving back tremendously to our community. Food distributions during the pandemic, wow. they support businesses, they support entrepreneurs, they support our schools. They really do give back and they really do invest. So Conbud is another layer in their industry and it's a legitimate licensed, uh, you know, cannabis uh, industry and cannabis dispensary mm -hmm. that is really going to create local jobs, stimulate the economy, and give back and really energize the area of the South Bronx, Mott Haven, Community Good. Board One. So we're very excited and we want to congratulate Conbud. Yeah. Nice to see mm -hmm. that they're giving back. Well, yes. thank you so much for your thank time, you. Brother President. Yes. Always great to see you. Great thank stuff. you very much.